What if a single book could mend broken bonds, elevate the fallen, and soothe pain? A book that transformed chaos into unity, bandits into heroes, the lost into leaders. A book with the power to heal in ways you never imagined. This isn't just any book. It's a journey of transformation, of spirituality, and of building a great nation that spanned across continents and cultures. I am, of course, talking about the Quran. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. Allah Ta'ala has described the Quran with various adjectives, emphasizing its great stature. One standout reference in Surah Fussilat, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد. Falsehood cannot approach it from before it or from behind it. It is a revelation from a Lord who is wise and praiseworthy. Allah declares it a mighty book that is free from any falsehood. Revelation from one who is the most wise and most benevolent. This book changed a people from those who hated each other to a people would sacrifice their lives for one another. From a people who worshipped wood and stone to a people who worshipped only their one creator. From a people who disregarded women as mere property to be owned to a people who honoured their womenfolk. From a people who would fight for 40 years over an animal which had strayed from one man's land into his neighbours to a people who were united under one prophet and with one Lord. From a people in whose gatherings wine was served abundantly to a people who gave up alcohol in totality, such that the streets of Medina were flowing with the wine that was thrown away. This is the power of the Quran. And if it could transform those people into the best of this ummah, then it can also change you, my dear brother or sister in Islam. But what does this actually mean for us today? How do we interact with the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imagine you had a letter from a king that everyone revered. Wouldn't you by default feel honored for having received it? The Quran is like that letter, but infinitely more profound. By connecting it, we instantly connect with our Creator, Rabbul Alameen, Lord of the Worlds, and subsequently we elevate our status. A striking example is from the time of Umar ibn al Khattab, which highlights this point. Nafi' ibn Abdul Harith met Umar ibn al Khattab in Asfam. And Umar anhu had appointed him in charge over Mecca. So Umar radiallahu anhu said to Nafi', Who have you appointed as your deputy over the people of the valley? Meaning the people of Mecca. So Nafi' replied, I have appointed over them Ibn Uzbah. Umar radiallahu anhu asked him, Who is this person? And so he replied, He was one of our freed slaves. Surprised, Umar radiallahu anhu said, You have appointed a freed slave over them? Nafi' responded, He is proficient in the book of Allah, has a lot of knowledge of it, and he is a scholar in the rules of inheritance, and he's a judge. Upon that, Umar radiallahu anhu said, Indeed, your Prophet وسلم, said, Surely Allah raises people by way of this book and makes others lowly by way of it. Allahu Akbar, through memorizing the Quran and knowing its rulings, someone who was a slave once in shackles was put in charge of the blessed city of Mecca in the absence of its governor. Allahu Akbar. And that is just the worldly reward. As for the reward in the hereafter, for reciting the Quran, then it is immense and without bound. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Whoever recites a letter from the Book of Allah, he will be credited with one good deed. And a good deed gets a tenfold reward, meaning it's rewarded ten times. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam continues. He said, I do not say that Alif Lam Meem is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Meem is a letter. Subhanallah, every time you recite the Quran, you get 10 good deeds added to your scale. Not for every word, but for every single letter that you recite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Surely those who recite the Book of Allah 
and they establish the prayer and donate from what we have provided for them secretly and openly they hope for an exchange that will never fail Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said whoever recites the Quran and masters it by heart will be with the noble righteous scribes of the angels and whoever exerts himself to learn the Quran by heart and recites it with great difficulty will have double the reward and this hadith is in Bukhari Allahu Akbar this shows that reciting the Quran and mastering it leads us to be in the company of the angels may Allah make us of these people and those who find it difficult to recite the Quran they get double the reward subhanallah now the scholars of Islam have said that when Allah's Messenger وسلم, said that they will be with the angels, this could mean either that there is a special place for those who recite the Quran in Jannah, where they will sit among the angels who carry the Quran and reveal it, or it could mean that the reciter of the Quran is similar to the angels in that he also protects the Quran from alterations by preserving it in his heart and continuously reciting it and fulfilling its commandments. Now, for all of us seeking practical advice, engage with the Quran, be it memorizing, understanding, teaching, or just reflecting upon its verses. Every interaction with the Quran amplifies our connection with Allah and consequently increases our honor. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ And we have certainly made the Quran easy to remember. So is there anyone who will be mindful? Always remember, being associated with the Quran in any way is undeniably a source of immense honor. It's so awe-inspiring, isn't it? How a book can uplift, transform and honor us. It's a call for us to reflect, engage and live the Quran, aiming for that elevated status in this life and the hereafter. So let me ask you a question. Have you read and understood the whole Quran cover to cover? Have you read it in full in Arabic if you understand Arabic? And if you do not understand Arabic, have you read a translation of the whole Quran in a language that you understand? If you have not, then wallahi, that is a true shame. This Quran is a message to you from the Lord of the worlds, from above the seven heavens. Allah recited this Quran for you. So let's make a resolution today, here and now. I want you to make a resolution that you will start reciting and reading the Quran or the translation of it in a language that you understand, not just the Arabic, but also the translation. So you actually understand what Allah is saying from above the seven heavens to you. From Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all the way to the end of Surah An-Nas. So who among you will make this promise today? I want you all to write a comment and commit to this Quran challenge so that you complete the translation of the entire Quran within 60 days. So in the next 60 days, that's half a juz per day. Remember, this book can transform you, your life and your whole family. Indeed, it can transform our entire ummah. So let me know in the comments below if you will commit to this challenge. I'd love to hear from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are honored by the Quran. Jazakumullahu khayran. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Raksh, please. What if a single book could mend bro... Turn it up, please. What? That, that. Move it back up. Talking about the Quran. And now you have to go back. You have to move that back. Oh.